so this is our test stand for the BPM2 and BPM5 engines. It's a modular test stand. It's transportable, so we can put it on a forklift. Then we can drive it to our uh, test cell, our uh, bunker setup. And it, uh, when it's completed, it will house two tanks of this size. So this is the uh, fuel tank, and over here we'll have the LOX tank. And you can see the uh, the tank is fitted onto a uh, load cell, which is hidden beneath this plastic, this uh, thermo insulating plastic. Uh, the tank will, when it's full of liquid oxygen, it will be cold, and so we have isolated the uh, the, the load cell with this thermo plastic. And uh, so it will be used for both of the BPM2, BPM5 engines, and uh, on the other side. The engines will be mount mounted, and this side will then house the uh, propellants and the high pressure gases and the electronics. front end of the test stand and here we have a load cell and onto that the LOX dome is fitted currently this is the BPM2 LOX dome and then the engine will be mounted out here and it will be uh, sitting on this this uh, sleigh system uh, inside here we'll have some ball bearings so this one can uh, drive back and forth a tiny bit such that uh, the engine will, will push up onto the uh, the load cell, and we'll measure the force from the uh, engine that way. And the uh, the propellants will then come out of uh, the holes that we have cut here. And so we'll fit these uh, umbilicals. So we'll fit them uh, here. We'll make some uh, tubing up here, and uh, go to the engine out here. Both the BPM2 and BPM5 will uh, be heavily instrumented, especially the BPM5 will have four pressure measurements on the engine itself and two thermocouples. And all of the uh, measuring instruments will then interface through this plate that will mount on the uh, blast shield. So it will be, uh, it will be, the tanks behind it will be protected from any debris from uh, an exploding engine. Um, and as I said, it will be the most heavily instrumented engine that we have ever built, uh, such that we can get some uh, some reliable measurements and uh, and work our way up to the BPM 100. This is uh, our test setup for the engine controller, uh, where we have been assembling the controller and testing all the different sensors connected to it. Um, the engine controller itself sits here. And here we have one of the test sensors, this is a thermocouple, will be replaced with a, a different one when we install it on the engine, but the, the principle is the same. Um, we have a couple of large motors here which will drive the main valves. They're also controlled by the software on the controller. Um, we have a number of pressure sensors that have been tested together with this board. They are now being, being mounted on the test stand. Uh, and we have a couple of load cells for measuring how much we put into the tanks and uh, what the trust is from the motor. And they will also be connected to this one via this board. Uh, they are also fitted to the test end now. Um, the whole system is controlled from a, a touch screen here, where we can see all the readouts uh, of all the sensors and control all the different valves. Mm -hmm. 
of the stainless steel propellant tanks and it's standing on top of its load cell so we will weigh the tanks and thereby measure both the amount of propellant that's in it when we tank it and also we'll measure the uh, the consumption as the engine is firing and the way we fill the tank is through this port over here so we have a manual ball valve here that we can open and close during loading and when the engine is running there'll be a valve sitting right here and I've got the, uh, for the other tank, got it right here. And on top of it will be fitted this uh, DC servo that will then, from a Scott's computer, will turn the valve and open to the, uh, to the engine. And the valve here is not a standard valve. It's not a standard ball inside the valve at least. It is uh, a V-groove ball. I don't know if you can uh, see that it's cut into a V, so it's not a round opening. Uh, and thereby you can control the, the flow better. So before we have, uh, on, on previous rockets, we have run in a pre-stage mode where we had two valves. So a small valve that would open gently uh, for a small flow, and then a big valve that would open for the main flow. On this setup, we'll use a single valve to first open slightly, and it will expose, you can see the, the tip of the V, and that will be the pre-stage, and then it will open fully for, uh, for the main stage burn. So instead of using two valves, we use this uh, V-groove valve from uh, Gosco. Everything is uh, basically ready for to, uh, tonight's test of the, uh, the LOX system. In a few minutes we'll fill the tank with liquid oxygen, then we'll pressurize it and check uh, the valve operation. And if that's successful, then everything is go for tomorrow.
so for tomorrow's test, we're testing the BPM2 engine, and we'll be running it several times. And what we're mainly looking for is uh, temperature difference between running it on our usual fuel mixture and a fuel mixture that contains uh, this TS additive. So uh, we'll basically be, be burning a couple of engines off uh, and looking for, uh, for temperature gradients uh, in order to minimize the temperature gradient. Mm -hmm.